welcome uh, whoever's uh, whoever's here to uh, today's uh, combinatorics on words uh, seminar. So um, it will be a little bit uh, different today. Um, today, uh, Stepan Holub will be uh, giving us a bit of a, a practical hands-on demonstration um, on the use of uh, Isabel. So uh, go ahead, uh, Stepan. Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, you know, my, my goal today is very simple. Uh, it's really, really to make you to try uh, to try the, the Isabel and of course you are allowed to just watch but I would be very happy if, if you if as many of you as possible would really try so actually maybe uh, maybe I will I will open the, the Isabel again Actually, so I, I, we probably don't go through the through the installation process again because so you are supposed to have installed the Isabel from this Isabel homepage, uh, right? For for your system, it should open, and then uh, you should have uh, downloaded this uh, this download the current ver draft version. All right, so I suppose that this is something you have you have done already. Uh, so I just I just now open 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 the open the, the downloaded Isabel uh, again. Sorry. So, uh, That will be funny if it doesn't start now. And I closed it. Okay, so it has opened. Right. So on the le left hand side, you know, so so this is the editor, and you can see that there are a lot of paints around, right? So there are a lot of things here. We will speak about something of them, you know, on the left hand side, right hand side, bottom. There are a lot of pains. And at the moment I open this theories pane uh, just to see, just to show you what happens when I open the scratch or I open a theory. So now I, uh, here is a file browser. And so I just open, open uh, the place where I downloaded our draft folder and I open the scratch. And now what happens is that, you know, uh, there is the import. It's the, the theory scratch is importing some other theories, actually all theories that are in the folder, you know, and it takes some time. So you can see, this is just to give you a, uh, an impression that, uh, you know, there is something happening on the background. There is actually a lot happening on the background all the time. So for example, if your Isabel crashes, that's, not so uncommon, right? Because there's a lot of things happening uh, on the background. So at the moment, you know, everything is done, everything is bootstrapped or everything is running. So we have, we have at the moment, every, all these theories are available. And moreover, there is a background, uh, background uh, HOL session running. You know, this is this little logic session, which tells us that we are running the, the logic session HOL. Uh, which is actually much more, you know, that's a huge, huge part of, that's the whole development of, of Isabel uh, assistant is, is hidden in this HOL, you know, and there are other sessions, but you shouldn't care at the moment. So I think like what, what we have, oh, uh, okay, so first, um, this is more or less what you what you see. I, I think that, for example, you probably don't have the timing uh, pane open by default. This is something you know. So, so this is you can customize a lot of things. But what what is important? So I will close this one or uh, and this one to gain space. Uh, so the most important uh, window is this output window on, at the bottom. 
you know, which is the way like the Isabel is communicating with me. So let's try, you know, the hello world or something. So uh, first, like whatever I write here is immediately evaluated, right? So if I write something like this, I'm informed that this is just syntactically wrong. Right? So that's the first like, <laughs> failure. So I have to start with something. So, so one thing is that I can try to write a term, right? So that's that's a keyword term. So I will write some term, and terms are written in quotation marks. You know, this is something like dollars in in uh, in LaTeX. Right. So what what kind of term can I write? Right. For example, one plus one. So one plus one is a correct term. And the output, you know, so this is this is kind of success that I have written a correct term. And the output window tells me that one plus one is a correct term and that it is of type type A. You know, so one first thing that you have to understand is that uh, we are in type logic. So every every everything we write has a type. And in this case, it has a type A which is a type variable actually, so it can be any type uh, or actually not maybe any type, but okay, doesn't matter. Uh, the first thing, I, I will come to that. Uh, the first thing I would like to stress is that uh, this program is heavily annotated. So if you press control and hoover, you will always get pop up this little window, which will tell you like what the thing is. For example, here the common term, it took 0 0.000 seconds to evaluate. And it's a command term, right? And so on. And moreover, you can click on it. And if you click on it, something maybe scaring happens that you are brought to the place where you know the given term thing is defined. So actually we we this is something which probably beginner is not expected to see, you know, but this is this is a liberal system, so you can see anything. And we, you know, we were brought to the theory pure, which is the very, you know, it's like the, the root of the roots, it's the, the, the very you know, source where such things like term is, are defined. So I probably I don't care, you know, that's that's a definition in ML of what term is. I don't care. So I have to go back. So the first thing is how to go back. So there is this back, right? This is very important for me, at least button back. So I'm back here, right? So, so this is term. Is this clear or are there any questions? You, know, you mean, I, I, really, I really want not to lose you on, on some trivialities. So how did, you any... get, how did you get all that? that stuff to appear i didn't when i clicked control it didn't get anything control hoover what is hoover uh, i mean just go on go with mouse you you this mouse you go over the over the over the yeah the, i'm clicking on a term with control and what i see is cut copy paste paste print. no okay so you first you first pressed control and holding it holding control you go uh, over the over what you want to uh, get information about. Okay, I do that, and it, it only shows me one plus one a. If you go over term, over the word term. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And if you so so if you press control and go with your mouse over co all for example. Okay, just a sec. So control co all nothing doesn't do nothing. Anything. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Okay, so this is this is really too bad. Any any other experience? I, you know, uh, Jeff is on iMac, so I, I I cannot. I'm on PC, so there's probably differences between. Okay, well, there's it's maybe it's command. I'll try command. So, so, command. Okay, instead of control. Oh, Alessandro Daloca. Oh, so is it command? It says when I do command, it says command term. Yeah, 
that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And not no, you don't have the information about time because that's no. probably some, uh, and this is an extra plugin that I have installed. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I, and now if I click, I get it. Okay, I see. Uh huh. All right, good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank you for asking. Yeah, because that's exactly something, you know, can happen, right? So so let's go combinatorics on words a bit. So, uh, you know, the multiplication of lists is append. So I write append uv. And append uv is just you know, a concatenation of lists. And if you look at the output, actually that is u dot v. That's because that's our notational abbreviation. So that's, now this is a feature of our Co, uh, co basic or combinatorics on words theories that we have a we have we don't want to write append so we have defined uh, this shortcut so i think this is very important for people who are used to keyboard you know is that if you are if you don't know how to type this u times v you can just type append uv and actually you can live on it but maybe you know maybe i don't want to do it i want to i want to use some abbreviation and actually hol has an abbreviation for concatenation which is which is at right so u at v is the is an abbreviation for append but you know still it shows us u dot v in the output you know because we have over overwritten this this append you know, with this this notation we, we have created our own notation so i am not going to explain you how you create your own notation i just want to explain you like what's the way how you can enter this this term right so this is a concatenation of two lists or the product of two words we would say you know and if you want to now now the mo most important thing is that you would probably like to write the dot yourself so how to enter the dot so the most easy way is to to try what you would do in lat latex right so backslash cc dot you know, and it really offers me the dot you know so so this is this is very convenient i think this is really really very well designed that that you can, in most cases, you can use this backslash LaTeX uh, and you will get the, your symbol. But I mean, if you are conservative, you can write append right, all the time. For example, more wild, more wild example is left quotient. That's another of our functions. And we, were, we are not sure how to denote left, uh, left quotient UV. You know, so there's this crazy notation, you know, which I admit must be discouraging to to to, to a beginner. You know, but that that's just our notation for left quotient, and you can you have either learn how to type it, or you can you can just write left quotient. Another way how you can enter the symbols is there is a pain symbol. Right? This is a, a sl slow way. So for example, if I want to write alpha, I can you know, term alpha. So I go alpha and I click on alpha, right? Then I have alpha, right? But, you know, this is quite slow. And again, hovering over alpha, I'm informed that it's actually backslash alpha. So I can remember that alpha is backslash alpha and I will use it later. You know, there are these little, there are these, uh, these uh, let's say, uh, brackets, which are, which are uh, not obligatory. So if I write alpha, you know, this is like the full, full form, but I can also write just backslash alpha. And again, I get it. And by top, by the way, by top, of course, I'm entering the suggestion. I am either clicking on it or about the top. I don't know whether on iMac there is also an alternative to tap, but you know I'm accepting 
So if I want to, again, if I want to write u c dot, so now I click top b, right? right. So, so this, this is about just entering terms. Is this, are there any questions about this? Or can you reproduce who is interested what I'm showing you? Okay. It works for me. Okay, fine. So now uh, let's try something at more advanced, which is a lemma, right? So let's write lemma and again, quotation marks. So what kind of lemma? Maybe let's try two plus two is four. All right. And now, so what, what I would like to prove this. Right? So what to do when I want to prove it? Well, so now one thing is to, the most easy thing is to write try zero, or actually I can just write try, okay? So this is, this is again, um, keyboard way, right? You just write try. And I'm informed here what try means. So try means trying some programs, you know, solve direct, quick check, try zero, sledgehammer and nitpick, and maybe some others. And try zero, found a proof. And the proof reads by sim. So actually, again, I can click by sim. I will get by sim. I have to cancel the try. And this is my first lemma proved. Right? So lemma is a lemma two plus two is equals four can be proved by some method, which is called simplification. So it's just by simplification of terms. I get, you know, and I get that it's true. You know? And now look at what happens in the output window. Right? So when I write lemma, the output window tells me that I have a goal. So I am, I am like obliged, my obligation is to prove a goal. There is one goal, there could be more of them, but at the moment there is one goal, which is my goal, right? Two plus two is four. And when I dis discharge the goal, or if I fulfill the goal, I get the theorem. You know, I can call it lemma or I can call it theorem. That's the same thing. Uh, eventually, Isabel, everything calls everything theorem, but you know, I can call it theorem, I can call it lemma, I can call it corollary, right? It's just, you know, a matter of taste, but everything is theorem at the end. Okay, so this is, how, so, so again, what's important is how did I get the proof, right? I have typed try, or I could try, recommended way is just to try, to, to type try zero directly, which is a simpler, simpler, simpler way, simpler, you know, and the try zero gives me even like many methods. This is so simple that many methods can, can prove it, right? By same, by auto, by fast force, by force, you know, and there are other possibilities. And actually anything, any of them would, would prove it by Metis, for example. Oh, Metis, no, interesting. Okay, so by, by blast, not blast. Okay, so by simp, not, not everything, but by simp, for example, okay. So uh, this is how you can get it. Uh, any questions? So typing try zero. And then there is another, oh, I should wait a little longer. So are there any questions about this? No, okay, so then there is one, I will show you one little trap. Right. It's a trap, a beginner's trap again. If I write one plus zero, try zero. Uh, okay, sorry, what's, what's wrong here? It seems, Oh, this is not this is not a claim. Sorry. Okay, you know, so so this is a good right, uh, good example. This was un unintended, but you know, the, something's wrong here. So I'm informed that this is not this is not a claim, right? 
So, so the lemma should be claim. So for, let's write this. So suddenly, you know, try, try zero tells me that there's no proof. You know, which may be extremely confusing. So why is this? Well, because, you know, one and zero has many meanings in Isabel. So, so I would like, well, and that one thing is comment. So I will write a comment here. So the comment is beware of types. You know, this is, this is very important, very important uh, advice, right? So if something very strange happens, then probably something, there is something wrong with types. So if I want to tell the type explicitly, I can say that what I mean is the natural number one. Right? And suddenly, suddenly it becomes obvious. That's what you expected, right? So the problem was, problem was that the one was not understood as the one of natural numbers. It was, you know, the one is an overloaded uh, symbol. So it can mean many things. And maybe, maybe sometimes even it is not true that one plus zero is one, even if this is hard to believe, but okay. Not, every, not everywhere it is available that one plus zero is one. Well, why not the same thing happens here? Well, because two already, you know, it has quite definite meaning. So this is, this is just a warning, yeah, but we got, we got uh, an additional feature here, you know, that the simple things that are available already somewhere are, you know, that's automatically, I'm informed that this is actually available already. Right? So there are actually many time, many, many ways how you can get this. There are already, you know, uh, five, theorems which actually tell the same so i can write by same probably right but i could also write for example here it is not i can i can write here using using this by sim now it's not needed the simp would do it itself so by simply sufficient, it means I don't need anything. But if it were something more complicated, and we will see it in a moment, then I can, I still I'm informed, you know. It's not necessarily that it's easy. It is just that it is available already, right? So I don't want to reprove anything, something that is already proven. So, so when, I'm, when I'm doing it, I don't see this goal and sub goal stuff. Uh, in the output? Yeah. Uh, so when you type, when you type two plus two is four, you don't see the goal here. No, no. And do you have a output open? Yeah, yeah. Output's open. Yeah. Yeah, you have to click the proof state. There's a little. Oh, check hey, okay. It's state. here. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. I see. That's probably not default. Maybe. Oh, proof state here. Thank you. Okay. All right. And um, uh, I also uh, are spaces uh, meaningful. By the way, by the way, uh, on the right right pane, there is a pane state. You know, so the state is always in a, in a state. It is always there, and it is convenient to actually let the state to be printed in the output as well. You know, so that's the difference. Um, are spaces meaningful? Like, do you have to write one space colon? No, colon? no, the spaces are not meaningful. Okay, because when I do it, it says outer syntax error keyword parenthesis expected, but end of input was found. Where? What? What? In two plus two is four. No, I'm typing by, and then it it wants a keyword. Okay, here there, there must be a there must be uh, there must be a space at least one. Okay, all right. Because the by by is a is a is a control word. Okay, got it. So by means like it's 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 a control word and simp is a method. Okay. Good. Very good. Uh, any other questions? Okay. So now all this is very simple, and now comes the the the, the killer, right? The killer is called sledgehammer. So if 
the try zero does not work or try does not work. Actually try, when I, when I write try, you can see that one of the one of the methods, right? One of the programs tried is, is sledgehammer. So so actually try try is a superset of sledgehammer, but often you want to use sledgehammer yourself. So there is a sledgehammer window here, this output window and sledgehammer window. And if you click apply sledgehammer, you now what happens is that some provers, some external provers here, provers CVC4, Z3, Spaz, E, and Vampire. Actually, with Vampire, we probably don't have a Vampire there because there is a little difficulty with a Vampire. So let me just just uh, cancel Vampire. So you know, so I it it it's this this is the this is the power of the Isabel. You know, this is for example, this is the edge over lean at the moment that you have this powerful sledgehammer, which is connecting to the outside. You know, this is not. This is Isabel is communicating with some external provers who are trying to find the proof. So in this case, of course, it's not necessary, but in the more difficult cases, it will be very important to use sledgehammer instead of just try. Because try, try zero, I should say, try zero is just, uh, just trying, you know, the most simple things. Uh, okay, but let's go. Let's go to to do to these more difficult things. Okay, so this is by sim. So now let's go to something. Uh, oh, what's what's wrong here? Okay, here you know. I mean, this is not correct because I didn't close this. I didn't close it, so I have to write uh, by sim again. But actually, if I want to abandon the proof, I can root, uh, write oops also. So oops is just give, giving up on, on the proving. Just to just to be able to continue. And here the, the blue color tells me, you know, that something that this is this was already it is already proven. So now let's go let's go to something more advanced. So something combinatorics on earth. So let's just write a serious lemma. So the serious lemma will will be that, or let's say semi-serious. That if u times v, uh, actually I should say, you know, I didn't write c dot now because I have a macro to, for the c dot. Right? So that's something I didn't mention. That eventually, of course, if you have something, I have a shortcut. I have a I have a keyboard shortcut for c dot. So I have ad, an advantage over you, but uh, but okay, uh, that's probably common knowledge that if you are typing something very often, you can make a shortcut. So if uv is a primitive, then vu is primitive as well, right? So it's just, you know, so this is a lemma. If uv is a primitive, then vu is a primitive. Okay, of course, you know, you have to know that the primitive is defined. So the primitive is defined. If you click on it again, you get into one of the, one, one of our theories, you know, so this is one of the theories which is called GoBasic, which is the one that you downloaded from our page. And you have a definition of the primitive, what the primitive is. What if you want to see the what primitive is without go, uh, sk skipping elsewhere? Uh, there is another uh, another keyword, which is tehama. You know, tehama is like, show me the, uh, show me something, print, print some theorem. So, I can write primitive def. Okay, again, this is some knowledge that that the, uh, underscore def is the right choice. But okay, let's suppose that you know it. So the primitive def. So and uh, at the output, I have the primitive def. Definition of the primitive right? is the, the the same one that I got before. That, that that I can you know I can click there and I get it, but. Here I have it available here. So, so this is this is a definition of primitivity. Let's read it. So u is primitive if for each r, you know, if it's a power of, if u is a power of r, r to the power k. Again, you know, that is the abbreviation. We have an abbreviation for the list power. Okay. So so maybe I should I should not rush over this. So. 
power, right? So again, I can write power, power u to the power k, right? And you can see again, you know, that we have an abbreviation for it. So in this case, you know, it's not that easy to type it, or actually I can show you how to type it. Uh, but again, you know, I have a shortcut for it. So that's another thing. So I, that's you, and now, uh, I have right soup, right soup, and ampersand, you know, and it's it's that's it. So so this is like this is a composed of two. You can see even that you know it's composed of two symbols. One of them is the upper soup soup, which is invisible, and the ampersand. Right? So so this is this may be a bit annoying, but if if you want, you can write power. Right, again, the same thing. That's a, just a pretty typing question. So let's go back to, to our theorem, to some, our lemma. So sorry, now, I'm, sorry yeah. I'm still struggling here with you getting this. Um, so I think I typed what you did, but what it, what should I have done for implies? Oh, 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 very good. Yeah, actually I am, I am, yeah. Okay, so the, the imply is is I just write you know what what's more sim more, more most uh, you know I write equal equal greater you know this is the ASCII this is the ASCII you know I I I, I type this okay and um. so so the, these more basic things are you know they are wired into so if you type this actually now if I do this it remains you know and this is valid as well okay know? got it but, but but if you if you write it quickly it will it will you know without this is something you are not asked even to whether you want it is it clear yep yeah okay okay this is important yeah okay uh so Okay, so actually, before going to the proof, I should tell you one little thing. Uh, actually, not little, one big thing. That is probably the last big thing that I have to tell you is that there are two different logics here. So, uh, if I if I write like A implies B, uh, I'm informed that this is this is a correct term, and it is of type prop, which means proposition. But I can also type uh, simple implication, which is also a correct term, which is of type bool. So I said that I will not be speaking about the, you know, about the technicalities, but this, this is probably not technicality. This is a basic thing, you know, that there are two levels of logic. Uh, there is an object logic, which is this HOL, and then there is a meta logic, and the meta logic. So, so this is the implies in the meta logic, and this is implies in whole. And the difference is as follows: right? the, the implication is just a connective. Right? This is like like or. So again, or is if I type try to type or, it is the right one. You know, just backslash slash. So there is a lot of intuitive things here. So a or B, you know, it's just a Boolean expression. It's either true or false. And I can, for example, type that A or B implies A, right? This is a correct term, it is not true, but uh, that, that, that's a correct term of bool. But if I write A or B implies this, this big, implies a so this is a different thing this is a proposition right it's a not term of time bool it's a proposition right so you know the system is just is simulating the fact that you are reasoning about the logic right so this this uh, big implies uh, should be read in a plain english right uh, you should i recommend you to see it as a plain english claim right so i'm saying if a or b then a. Right. Right. This is this, this means this means uh, 
this means uh, if you know, if a or b okay in this case i don't know why it didn't oh it doesn't matter if a or b then then a right this is a claim this is a proposition this is some claim instead if i write if i write if I write uh, A or B implies A, that's just a Boolean expression as any other. It's a Boolean expression, it can be true or false. While this is a reasoning, right? So, so okay, I, I, I think this is quite important. And again, it may be, it may be discouraging, but I hope um, it's not that surprising, right? So, uh, we have a logic which is HOL, and what we are doing in Isabel is that we are reasoning about things, right? and this reasoning, of course, is formalized somehow. But this formalization is not equivalent to the to the Boolean logic, right? So A implies B, like this Boolean B imply or uh, I mean Boolean A implies B. You know, it's just a Boolean expression, and I want to reason about it. I want to say that it implies something. So this is important to notice. So this is so what this lemma says, right? In in view of what I have just said, you know. So so this should be read as assume that u and v is primitive, and then I claim that v u is primitive as well. Actually, actually, let's abandon it actually there's another way which uh, to write it which is more ex which more explicitly uh shows this 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 uh this fact that i'm describing assumes and shows and th these are another key term key terms and okay and you can see that in the output uh, okay, what's the in the output? Uh, okay, okay, okay. There is a there is a little difference. Okay, I wanted to say that the output is the same, but okay. Um, you can write it this way as well. There's a little difference which I didn't want actually to enter here. Maybe, but maybe this is a, a, an occasion to show you something else. You can also skip, you know, oops means that, okay, I probably don't want to prove it. I am giving up, but you can also write, sorry, which means uh, please accept my apology that I will not prove it now, but mm, take it as proven. And so this is, this is very convenient that right, you can postpone proving something. If you believe that it's true, you can, you can, you know, you can just, uh, make the system to assume that this is true right so you know just by writing sorry and it's red to show you that you know you are cheating this, this is cheating proper and right? this this is just cheating and but anyway you know the system accepted my cheating and it says you know so you have proved this theorem and i wanted to show you that the theorem is actually written in the same way as above so so the resulting theorem is is the same one right so I wanted to, what I wanted to show here is that, you know, that this implication should be read as assume and show. Okay. But now let's go, let's see whether this is true or not. Well, of course, uh, you know, now kind of pedagogical problem now for me is that there are two options, right? Either this is already proved in our theory and then I have nothing to show you, right? It's just proved already. Or it is not yet proved. And then probably the writing down the proof is, um, I don't have time to, to do it properly, right? So so what, what to do? Well, let's see what happens, right? So at least let's see what which of the, of the options is, is uh, takes place here. Well, first, I am not informed immediately by auto, by this blue thing, you know, that it is already available. So it means that it is not available in this precise form. 
you know, because this this is quite sensitive. It's this is something for that you probably, for example, have in lean, right? If there is something exactly the same, you are informed uh, that it exists even in lean. But here it is not syntactically the same thing is not there yet in our theory. But you know, it would be quite strange if it were not there at all. And that's exactly the situation where you want to ask Sledgehammer to prove it. And now what I'm going now to show it, I'm a bit actually uh, nervous, or I don't know what happens because when we were preparing this with Stepan Starosta, I should say that, uh, as you know, that this, this development, whole development is done with Stepan Starosta uh, and others, uh, I was in some students. Uh, so actually the sledgehammer, there is a level of randomness in how sledgehammer works because it's, you know, it's calling external, external provers and so on. So, so for example, on my machine, the sledgehammer didn't find the proof and on Stepan's it did. So I don't know, we can try. Okay, so now I have, I made, okay, that's, that's uh, you know, that happens sometimes. I have changed the, the, these provers. I have typed on, in a, I have typed by mistake something here. So now, once again, so here, you know, this is also something which happens sometimes, right? By mistake, I have written here somewhere something. So I'm informed that E try zero is no prover, but okay, now, now I've corrected it and I click apply. Right? So let's see. Okay, proof found, you know, yesterday I didn't find it. Okay, so this is, you know, this is, this is the big thing that sledgehammer will help you to find the proof if it is in the reasonable distance from what is already proved, right? So again, I can click prim conjugate by auto, you know, and it's actually becomes obvious that it is already proved, but in a slightly different way. So let's see what's the slightly different way. Okay, so the slightly different way is this one, right? If U is primitive and U is conjugate with V, this is this is a conjugate, then also V is primitive. So so that's why you know that's why it was not it was not immediately available because it's formulated a bit differently. You know, and I think I think you should appreciate this, you know, because this is exactly you know what. Uh, you wouldn't know how to how to find out, you know, that there are some other form, some similar form is there, and that's what Sledgehammer does for you. It will find a similar theorem, or actually, it will show that you know using prim conjugate by auto, you know, as soon as you use this this claim, already the the uh, automatic automatic, uh, you know, you get. Can try here, try zero actually, and you know, okay, you can see that many, many methods already are able, you know, to 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 conclude the lemma as soon as prim conjugate is available, as soon as, as soon as it sees the hint. Right. So let's. I prefer method is blast, so let's write by blast. Okay. Any questions here? I will show you an, another way how to find out, right? So I could also say, I could also use find theorems. Uh, find, find theorems, which is a, a diagnostic tool. Okay, so these are all theorems. You can see that there are 23,000 <laughs> theorems. But I want some theorems about primitivity. So let's show me the theorems which say something about primitivity. But well, there are 41 of them. All of them are ours, right? There is no our primitive is our our term. So there is nothing in the whole about primitivity. So these are 41. Theorems, and you can search for something available, uh, something useful. For example, here you would easily spot this prim conjugate, right? If Sledgehammer didn't find it. 
Uh, but I actually, if I know that this has something to do with the conjugate, I can or even write whether there is something which tells something about primitivity and conjugate. You know, and there are four such theorems. So again, you know, so this is, now I'm coming to the fact, you know, that this development is, I don't know whether I should say that it's advanced or it's, it's certainly advancing, you know, and there are already a lot of things. And so we are just offering this to you, you know, to, to play with that and to use what we have already done. And I think that eventually this should be kind of collective effort that you know, uh, we will have, it's at, at the moment, I think we have about, about 1000 lemmas, right? So when we have, we'll have 10,000 lemmas, you know, that will be just easy that you will write down the, your lemma and you will see whether it's already, you know, known and you don't have to prove it in your paper. You just say, okay, this is known. Uh, and it, it is verified, you know, so you may be sure that you didn't didn't forget uh, write down that W is not empty or something, right? You just have flawless, uh, flawless certificate for the validity of your of your lemma that you want, you know, because there are some lemmas that you want. I think that in combinatorics and words, that, that's my experience. Uh, uh, and probably yours, I, I don't know, but you may disagree, but my experience is that there is a kind of disagreement in our community about what is trivial and what is not, right? So in papers, often you get like people are reproving, re you know, the same thing again and again. And on the other hand, if you write, this is known, then the referee will tell you, this is not known, you should give a proof and, you know, things, things like that. Can I ask you, know, you so, a question? Can I ask you yeah. a question? Yeah. Suppose I want to know whether or not your definition of primitive uh, is that the empty word is primitive or not. How would I check that? You just write lemma uh, primitive empty word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how do you do the empty word? Uh, it's epsilon. Okay. So lemma primitive epsilon. Yes. Backslash epsilon. Okay. And sledgehammer. Okay. And apply sledgehammer. And it's not primitive, I can tell you. So uh, well, I got proof found for primitive epsilon. Yeah. Okay, so you have probably somewhere sorry above. No. 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 And uh, what's the proof? It says proof found. Use prim conjug by blast. Okay, but that's that's this is this is this primitive. You are not. You are probably. Uh, the cursor is on the previous lemma. You are proving the, the, the this primitive view. The okay, I'll get primitive. rid of that. I'll get rid of that. And now sledgehammer again. Yeah. Oops. Why? And yeah, it says the pr the prover gave up. Yeah. So so this just tells you that probably it is not true, right? Because if it were true, that would probably be true. But this, of course, does not. But OK, you can actually try to prove the opposite, right? That that will be more convincing. OK, all right. Uh, so let's try, OK, proof found, yes. You know, so primnam is a claim. Right? So primnam is tells that Uh, tells exactly this, right? That okay. That's again, okay. you know, it's it's slightly different. It's it's you is primitive, then you is non empty. Okay, thank you. But of course, you got you could also just inspect the uh, the definition. If you, I mean, this is what you can do. If this this is what you are invited to do. Like uh, if you are lazy, let's say, or if you don't want to think. But if you want to, if you want to to like. Make your own opinion. You you can of course look at the definition of the primitivity uh, and uh, just say that it's for each R K. If R is a R to K is U, then K is one. Then this is of course not true for empty word, you know, because empty word. If R is empty, then empty to the power two is empty as well. 
So this is not valid for. You know. So th 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 this this is you know my own reasoning, but uh, the, the is Isabel is con confirming that this is not true. Thanks. Thank you very much for for this question, for for this kind of questions. Uh, I would be happy if other people were qu had questions. Other 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 questions. Okay. Okay, so, but let me now actually, of course, I was kind of expecting that I will be here at this moment. And, okay, I didn't expect it, but I, I was prepared to have a lecture that would start more or less here, but I didn't expect that it will happen like that. So I'm happy, but let's now, you know, let's suppose that it is not proved, right? So we already know that, let, let me show you, let me show you how I would, be proving it if this uh, print conjug were not there. So let's just see what the print conjug says. It says this, but let's let's just ignore it and let's try to prove it. So how do I, do I prove something like now seriously, right? If so far it was just for free, which is also something I'm offering to you, right? That you can just use what is already done. But if you want to do something yourself, which is of course the the, the fun, or you know, some people say that. This is, this is the most exciting computer game in the world. So, so I agree with that. So let's try, let's, let's write the proof. So the proof starts with proof and ends with QED. Now, a little thing is that I have right here a dash. Don't, don't ask me why at the moment. So proof minus. And so I'm informed now, so, no, so Isabel is happy. It's not happy with QED, but it's happy with the with the proof. And it tells me, oh, you are you are now in the proving state, or yeah, you are in the situation where you you are inside the proof and you have this goal. Okay. So how do I prove it? Well, first, and this will look a bit ridiculous. Uh, you know, this tells me if you assume that primitive, that UV is primitive, then also VU is primitive, you know, so there is this if you assume, so this is like, uh, if you assume, and so on, right? So actually I have to assume it, which is something you would, you know, you may seem to think that this is a bit ridiculous, but, you know, that's how it is. So you have to first assume it. Otherwise, you know, it wouldn't work. So, and now I have to show, show the conclusion. Right? And Isabel is happy. She says, okay, this is what, this is what we are supposed to do. You are supposed to assume this and to show this. Now, just to show you the difference, if instead I will say, I will show that one plus one is two, or let's say two plus two is four, which we know is true. Isabel says, okay, this is maybe true, but this is not what we are supposed to prove. Right? You know, so already, already the fact that I had, you know, so it's saying failed, failed to refine any pending goal. You know? So by saying show, I am saying, this is what I'm supposed to prove. So already the previous, it's, it's kind of achievement already this. You know, so Isabel is saying, yes, this is a structure of proof that I accept. So for example, I could write here have instead of show have, have is a, another keyword, two plus two is four by sim. And Isabel says, yes, so what? <laughs> you know, I, I can write, I can prove anything, but as, as soon as I write show instead of have, I am claiming, and this is what I'm supposed to prove, right? So if I, for example, prove inside this, again, Isabel is complaining, this is not what we are supposed to prove. Okay, so this was a little, little thing. Um, I should stop soon, actually. So let me, let me, let me continue, and then I stop when, when I have to stop. So I'm assuming this, and now how to prove it? Okay, so, so again, what's the, what's the, what's what the hell is the is the 
is the definition of the primitivity, right? So I'm supposed, I am, I am uh, supposed to prove this, right? About, about, uh, about the, the word view, right? So let's prove it. Half, I'm supposed to prove this. What's wrong? Uh, what's wrong? On board. Okay, that is okay. This is something I didn't tell you. What what this little what this little uh, question mark is, and I don't have time to tell you now. So so you know you you could see that in the output, or maybe I tell you. Uh, this is important. You know you could notice that in the output of anything. Uh, okay, we had here something without variables. So now this is this something with variable. So, you know, uh, in the like theorems, there is this question mark U. If you hover on it as usual, you can see that the question mark A is a sch schematic variable. It's a schematic variable. Oh, actually, this question mark U is a schematic variable. What that, what that means? Well, you can, you probably know from logic, like what's the schematic, what's the scheme of axioms, for example. So actually this, this uh, theorem or this definition, it's, it's a claim, it's a proposition, let's say. It's a proposition, yeah. It's a definitional proposition. Uh, so it's a proposition, it's, it's of type. It's of type, I hover on it, it's a proposition. Okay, it's a fact, okay, doesn't matter. It's a if of type proposition anyway. Uh, so this, is uh, this is actually not just one theorem. It is, a, it is infinitely many theorems which are valid for any substitution for, uh, for you. So question mark U is a schematic variable, which means that the theorem is actually valid without you know, any further ado uh, for any substitution. For any substitution, so you know I can, for example, if I copy it and I write lemma. Okay, if I write lemma, this lemma, it will tell me that this is known already, right? I hope. Yeah, you know it's blue announcement. You know this is already known, but you know I have substituted here you for. For, for this question mark, but I could write here anything, anything I wish, you know, something complicated, right? So I don't know, left quotient, what, whatever, right? Left quotient UV, for example, or quotient, whatever. And of course I have to write the same thing on the other side. You know, and I am in the same way informed that this is, you know, it is the same theorem. So this is this is what the schematic variable means, you know. So it's like it's true for any term, any term of a given type. So U is uh, has to be a list, but if you have anything which is a list, it is the same theorem. So you don't need to reprove it. Right. So. Uh, I was prompted uh, to this because, uh, you know, Isabel complained that I have copied this. So here the schematic variable is, has nothing to do, right? I, am, I have to instantiate it. So I'm instantiating it this way. So I am, okay, let's suppose that I don't want to, I don't have no time to prove it. So I say, sorry. And now I say, okay. So after I have proved this, I should be able and there is a little word then, then show, and the show what I was supposed to show. You know, so this is, for example, the typically used of sorry. So I suspect that after proving this, you know, I don't want to in, invest my time in proving it before I'm sure that it's useful. So I just say sorry, assume that it's proved, and then I hope then I have. I can prove my conclusion. Okay, let's ask Sledgehammer.
Okay, and Sledgehammer is not giving me what I expected, and I'll tell you why. That's another beginner's frustration, is that actually I am assuming the definition of primitive, which you know you would say, okay, what else should you use? But how the sledgehammer should know, right? The sledgehammer is just, you know, the sledgehammer is not clever, which is just a very powerful. You know? So it's I have to I, I have to give a hint. So let's try to use the, the definition of the primitive. And now it should be by try zero actually to make it shorter. No, it's not. Okay. I, I think you should have I, I v should times stop. u in half. Stepan, v times what? u in, in line 48. Oh. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Of course. I am proving. I am proving this for. Oh, thank you. So now, Sledgehammer will find it. You think? So maybe, maybe, maybe I said that. Okay. Let's see whether Sledgehammer will find that. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. So sorry. Uh, so there is something uh, similar to the definition. So there is some, 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 or some claim which. Okay, but let's let's do it as I wanted to do it. So let's use it to the primitive def. There is another claim here, there which is called introduction of primitivity. Using primdev by blast should work as well. Yeah. Right. You know, so so from this, I can get, get this just using the, the definition. You know, that's exactly, you know, I think this is quite readable, right? So if I have this, then just using the definition, I will get the conclusion. And what remains to do is to prove half. You know, so I can introduce here another proof. I can open another proof if if I want. If I want to prove it, you know, and I, I am supposed to prove this, and so on, right? and I have to stop here. Thanks, uh, thanks, Stepan. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, sorry, I'm still struggling even with this example. I'm getting type uni unification failed. No type arity list one. Where? Uh, I think I've typed exactly what you've typed. Lemma primitive u dot v implies primitive v dot u. Okay, you, you don't have a parenthesis, I guess. Where? Where parenthesis? These? Parenthesis? Yeah, I have those. Yeah, yeah. You have the same thing. And where yeah. do you get the? Okay, so where do you get the 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 the, the complaint after uh, writing the lemma? Uh, when I am at QED. Which one? This one. Or uh, let's let's. Oh, I see. I see. I I I see. I have one thing wrong. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. I, I can you know I I I have written the QED too early, so I can just go on this way. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other questions? All right, if not.